While we have a ton of running backs dealing with injuries, at least we don't have the crazy amount of buys like last week. So you do have a considerable amount of options here, even if they are backups. Starting off tier one, nothing to talk about. CMC averaging 24 and a half points per game. His team's at the very top of the NFL with their implied team total of 28.25 points. They're starting him. You're not thinking twice. Let's move down. Alvin Kamara will be too. Kamara's been everything you've wanted from Austin Eckler this year, where he's giving you consistently seven, eight targets per game. He has the usage in the red zone, even if Taysom Hill will steal some rushing touchdowns. And at the same time, you have a beautiful matchup going up against the Carolina Panthers. We're going to go Travis Etienne at three. Now I'm recording this right before the Bengals game. So if anything crucial happens there with Etienne, I will update this later in the week with the flex rankings. Bijan Robinson will come in at four. Going up against Tampa, I really want to have Bijan Robinson in the tier above, but I mean, ultimately, he's only averaging 14.1 points per game. While he's 100% trending in the right direction, and I want to remind everybody that Bijan Robinson does have the best playoff schedule of any running back in fantasy. It's still tough to have him ahead of someone like Kamar, right? Who's averaging 21 points per game, almost seven points per game more than Bijan. Jameer Gibbs will be our next running back at five. With Gibbs, you're going up against Chicago. Maybe you make the argument, well, Mason, come on, man. I mean, this is a spot where we assume that the Lions are winning in the second half. They're able to run the ball. We're making these rankings for a full BBR format where obviously the rushing upside matters, but also we need to be tracking what these guys are giving you as receivers. We will go to Von HN at six. With HN, I know this looks very aggressive, but he's averaging 21 and a half points per game, and we have now seen this over a larger sample. You have the highest implied team total of any team in the NFL this week with the Miami Dolphins at 30.25. So just like we said a week ago, I am starting HN. I am starting Raheem Bostert with no hesitation. Kyron Williams will be our next running back in here at seven. With Kyron, I think you can make an argument, maybe some other weeks to have him ahead of HN, ahead of Gibbs, ahead of B. John Robinson. It's just a very tough matchup going up against the Baltimore Ravens, where right now you have the Los Angeles Rams with an implied team total of only about 17 and a half, 18 points. So it's just a really tough matchup for Kyron, but he's been phenomenal. Rashad White will be our next running back at eight. You have another low implied team total here with the Bucks projecting out to only score about 18 and a half, 19 points in this game against Atlanta. They're actually going to be underdogs in this game against the Falcons here. But with Rashad White, if you look at that PFF graph, you are going to see that he is just consistently trending in the right direction with his overall snaps played. And he gives you the floor as a receiver as well. And we're going to go Zach Moss here at nine. With Zach Moss, I expect that the Indianapolis Colts will be favored in this contest. Going up against Cincinnati, a team with no Joe Burrow, a team that's going to have a hard time moving the ball down the field consistently. Zach Moss is playing all the snaps. Zach Moss projected to have 98 total yards on underdog fantasy last week, which I thought was crazy having him as the second highest projected running back. So we took the fewer than on underdog and that hit. I'll flex on y'all for that. But at the same time, it does tell us that we need to go through and we need to start him from a week to week perspective. Now, dropping down to our next tier, we're going to go Josh Jacobs at 10. With Jacobs, obviously very bad offense with the Raiders here. But you're going up against Minnesota, so you actually have an implied team total of about 19 points. We know Jacobs should have pretty much every single touch out of his backfield as well. So even if typically the offense is gross and you should naturally expect a lot of inefficiency here, I mean, the volume is going to be there and it should be a better spot than what we're used to. Now, Austin Eckler will be our next running back in here at 11. I am making these rankings for a full PBR format where obviously Eckler is still getting involved as a receiver. Now, if you're going to go and look at Eckler's underdog pick them, they currently have them at 49 and a half rushing yards. And I'm going to be going with lower than 49 and a half rushing yards for Austin Eckler on underdog this week. But you still start him in a full PBR format where he has a great matchup against the Broncos where he has an applied team total of 23 points. So Vegas is telling us the Chargers will be one of the better offenses in the NFL. And you're going up against the Denver Broncos. So we're going to take him in a full BBR format, but we are going to take the fewer than 49 and a half rushing yards on underdog. He's only hit that mark three times so far this season. And of course, if you want to tell me on that underdog pick him, or if you want to take advantage of the special big they have on Thursday, Najee Harris, more than less than half a total yard. You can find that on Underdog Fantasy. Link in the description. Link in the comment section. Promo good Flock. Going to get you set up with a 100% deposit match. 
plus our rest of season fantasy football rankings and tiers. And on top of that, ladies and gentlemen, that Najee or special pick and more than less than half a total yard. Now, Tony Pollard will be our next running back in year 12. While Pollard maybe was disappointing from around one perspective, we're going to reiterate you start this guy every single week. He's playing one of the best offenses in the NFL. You have an applied team total of 28.25 points. Right now, this projects out to be like the highest scoring game in the NFL this week. And Pollard's getting involved as a receiver each and every week as well. So we're going to go through. You're going to be starting Pollard, even if it's a toughish matchup on paper going up against the Eagles. And then David Montgomery should be in a pretty good spot going up against Chicago, right? I mean, the two backfields that you start, both guys every single week, are going to be the Lions, are going to be the Dolphins. I mean, the offenses have more than enough production to go around, specifically in Detroit, where obviously this is an elite level offensive line. Now, dropping down to our next year, we're going to go Isaiah Pacheco at 14. You can make a strong argument to have Pacheco higher than this, uh, have them in that tier with Josh Jacobs. The only thing that I would be hesitant on is waiting to make sure that you have no Jarek McKinnon. If you have no McKinnon in this game, move Isaiah Pacheco up into that tier alongside Josh Jacobs. Because with no McKinnon, obviously Pacheco has been just absolutely crushing it. Now, with that being said, if McKinnon does come back in here, I do expect the volume just to come down a bit. Now, Saquon Barkley will be our next guy at 15. With Barkley, just horrendous offense. Should be one of the worst offenses in the NFL. Still really like him from a receiving standpoint. Obviously, an extremely talented player as well. You just have to be very realistic of what we're going to be looking at here with the Giants, who should project that to have a bottom three offense each and every week. Now, Raheem Mostert, on the opposite end of the spectrum, maybe a committee back, maybe not as talented as... He's playing in Miami. If you're playing in Miami and you have a 30-point blind team total, every single one of these guys will be startable. So you start Mostert, so you start Devon Achan, and you do not think about it. DeAndre Swift will be your next guy at 17. While I understand, yes... DeAndre Swift maybe was disappointing this past week where you did have Kenneth Gainwell seeing more snaps. That was a game where they got blown out by the 49ers, right? We're not necessarily expecting a blowout here against Dallas now. With that being said, Dallas is currently favored in this contest by about three and a half points. So I don't know. I mean, it is tough for us to sit here and say that DeAndre Swift is someone that we can project that as an RB1, just given the game environment. And we know that typically in these style games, Swift should be involved just a little bit less. Now, Brees Hall will be our next running back. With Brees Hall, you have an implied team total of 14 and a half points. You're going up against the Houston Texans. In a full BBR format, you still start Brees Hall because he's going to have the receiving usage. He's having like eight, nine targets per game over the past few weeks. However, in a non-PBR league, just given the fact that the touchdown simply won't be there, it will be a little bit tougher with how bad this offense is. Now, dropping down to our next tier, we're going to go James Cook at 19. James Cook should be in a very high-scoring game going up against KC. Obviously, should be one of the higher-scoring games of the week. Cook averaging about 12.5 points per game, and looks like at this point, Fournette's literally nothing. I thought Fournette was going to come in and play the Damian Harris role and turn this into a three-man running back by committee. Looks like you don't have to be worried about it. Javante Williams will be our next running back. You have an applied team total of about 20 points. I understand Javante has really not scored any touchdowns so far this season. But we know touchdowns will be extremely volatile from week-to-week -week perspective, even a year-to-year -year perspective. What I'm tracking is going to be the underlying opportunity. And there you are seeing Javante with more and more snaps each and every week. Now, Joe Mixon will be our next running back in 21. Now, my expectations with Mixon... He continues to see almost every single touch out of his backfield and one of the worst offenses in the NFL. Now, of course, if something dramatically changes this on Monday night, we're recording this right before the game, we will go through and update this in our flex rankings later in the week. So please don't scream at me. Taji Spears will be our next guy at 22. I am making this ranking under the assumption that Derrick Henry will not be playing this week. Now, it looks like Derrick Henry has a shot to play. So this will be something that I'm going to continue to monitor over the course of the week, and I will continue to give you updates. But as it stands, if you have no Derrick Henry, I would like to get Taji Spears in there in a full PBR format where we know he is going to get involved as a receiver. The primary issue is just this offense doesn't project out to be one that you're super excited about with an applied team total of about 17 points. 
Now, dropping down to our next tier, Kenneth Walker is someone else that we don't have the exact injury updates on, but I'm operating under the assumption that we have Kenneth Walker playing here. Now, if you have Kenneth Walker and no Zach Charbonnet, Kenneth Walker may actually be a little bit higher in these rankings. This will be another backfield we have to continue to monitor. What sucks is you're going up against the Niners, right? So it is the toughest matchup you could ask for. Ezekiel Elliott in another tough matchup going up against Pittsburgh. We're assuming you have no Ramadre Stevenson. If Ramadre plays, you would never play Ezekiel Elliott. Zeke should have pretty much every single touch, but you have an implied team total of 12 freaking points. So Vegas is telling us that this should be the worst offense in the NFL this week. So even if you're going to have pretty much every single touch, if you're in the worst offense of the league, not too exciting. Chuba Hubbard will be our next guy. Now, Chuba's not seeing every single touch out of the backfield. You are getting Miles Sanders still involved some, but Chuba Hubbard obviously phenomenal this past week. Cracks over 100 yards, gives you multiple rushing touchdowns. I mean, you have an implied team total of 16 points, though, so you'll notice with all these guys in this tier, they're all supposed to be in very bad offenses this week. Same thing with Najee Harris here, right? Najee looks like he is taking over as the RB1, but you have no Kenny Pickett. Trubisky is the quarterback. You have an implied team total of 18 points. You're going up against the Pats. It's a tough matchup. Najee's only averaged about 10.3 points per game so far this season. So, yeah, I mean, it is a little tough to be excited about Najee Harris in particular, even if he's been much better since Matt Canada has been fired. And I will say, of course, I do think Najee Harris will have a yard this week. So I would go over and check that out on Underdog Fantasy. Promo good flock. Najee Harris to have more than one total yard. Now, Khalil Herbert will be our next guy here. The issue is, if you're looking at Chicago, while it's a good matchup going up against Detroit and you have an applied team total of almost 20 points, this may end up being a three-man running back by committee. So you know what? As I think about this, with the possibility of it being a three-man committee, there's no way in hell we can have Khalil Herbert this high. We at least have to drop him down behind Damian Pierce, who looks to be the starter in Houston, even if he is splitting with Devin Singletary, but it's a good offense. And Jerome Ford, who... I mean, it's splitting with Kareem Hunt, but the difference is in Houston, in Cleveland, those are going to be only two-man backfields, right? We're not having to worry about the third guy coming in and stealing touches like you'd have to be worried about Roshan Johnson and Deonta Foreman in Chicago. Now, Keaton Mitchell will be our next guy at 30. With Keaton Mitchell, this is another three-man running back by committee. It's a very good offense. Keaton Mitchell's only averaging eight and a half points per game. I mean, this past week before the bye, that was the best week that we've ever had from Mitchell in terms of him going out there and actually commanding volume. But let's see if he can do it again. Let's see if he can continue to expand his role. That's going to be the main thing that we need to see because obviously he's proven to us that he can be very efficient. It just primarily comes down to, okay, can you not only be efficient, but can you see more touches out of this backfield overall? Um, Jalen Warren will be our... Next running back with Warren. I thought no Matt Canada was going to mean, okay, you are more excited. You're going to be bumping him up. No, the usage has actually gone down, which at least in my mind, surprising. Uh, Jalen Warren's been more efficient than Najee Harris all season. I mean, if I was the offensive coordinator, which of course I'm not smart enough to be, I'm an idiot, but I would probably use a little bit more Jalen Warren, a little less Najee Harris. But Jalen Warren only averaging 11 half points per game and in a tough matchup going up against New England. Gus Edwards will be the next guy. Obviously, Gus Edwards is going out there and scoring a ton of touchdowns at one point. But Keaton Mitchell is taking more and more involvement. Gus Edwards has no usage as a receiver either. And then Alexander Madison will be our last guy in this tier. Maybe we go through and put Alexander Madison higher than this. In that, I mean, you are only splitting with Ty Chandler, it is a good matchup going up against the Raiders. You have an implied team total of 21 and a half points. So the offense should be fine. So you know what? I actually am going to move Alexander Madison up just a bit. Let's go ahead and let's move him up closer to about 28, 29. But I think that's all I have for y'all in this video. If you enjoyed it, please go down there, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football. And if you wanted to check out any of those pickums we talked about on Underdog Fantasy, Promo good flock, 100% a positive match, plus our rest of season fantasy football rankings and tiers, and a Najee Harris special pick on more than less than half a total yard. But thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. I really do appreciate you. 
Really hope you have a great day and really hope we get to see you in the live stream later tonight.